voices in my head They counsel me, they understand, they talk to me Okay, it's the Viper 5567 here with the Attitude Era episode 22, I think it is now, 20, yeah, 22. This is a In Your House a Breakdown, the one and only, obviously. Um, this was in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. So yeah, this pay-per-view wasn't particularly great, if I'm being completely honest. It wasn't, like, this wasn't... This didn't appeal to me to be quite honest. Um like the main event wasn't great. The best match probably was the steel kick like, oh, sorry, that's big controller. Um probably the best match of the night was the steel cage match, so that was pretty good. Main event was average, really to be quite completely honest. Like Undertaker like Kane in the match really didn't really help it. Stone Cold Undertaker, like it's just not really got it wasn't it's not going to be a classic match, let's just say. So, like, come on, we'll just get on with this while I can. So, the first match was Owen Hart defeating Edge. You know, a decent opening match. I gave it two and a half. I thought it was pretty decent. Two, obviously, Canadians, but I think they favoured Edge more than Owen Hart, which was surprising, considering, like, Edge is just only in the company, what, but less than two months. Owen Hart, like, is an established, basic Canadian hero. So, but, yeah, fair enough, he is a heel no, still it doesn't matter. Usually, most Canadians get a big pop when they come back to their home country. So, but what can you do? Both guys, uh, they get a he does get a decent re until they, they call him a nugget, basically, which was funny. Um, monkey flip by Owen, but Edge lands on his feet and then a drop kick from Edge. Uh, Honey can run from Edge and then a baseball slide. Edge goes for crossbody, but Owen counters it into a power slam on the floor. Missile drop kick down from the top gets two for Owen. And then I go around. Shoeplex gets two for him. Then a backbreaker. Neckbreaker gets two for Owen. And then he comes, comes with a belly to belly that also gets two. Victory roll as well gets two for Owen. Edge then counters it for two. Cross body from him as well. And then an insecurity from Owen. Edge reverses it to a sit down powerbomb. And then a flapjack from Edge. Spin neckbreaker gets two for Edge. Beautiful DET then gets two from him as well. And then Edge gets another suplex and then gets two. German suplex gets two for um Owen inside cradle gets two for Edge, spinning heel kick then from Edge. Then we see Christian for the very first time. He distracts Edge, Hart then with a pin for the win. So decent match, decent match. I must say two and a half stars. I'd like to pretty much probably slightly overrate the match, but I don't care. I just, it's my opinion. I just like the match. So and obviously Edge goes after Christian in the crowd. So this is obviously the beginning of the brood. Basically, obviously Gangrel, Christian, and Edge. So. Next then, Al Snow and Scorpio defeat too much in a shit match. Like, very piss poor match. I give it half a star. I'm probably overrating that as well. Didn't think it was pretty good. I didn't think this match was any good at all. Obviously, Al Snow just returning from. Finally got his contract basically beating uh, Sergeant Slaughter in a boot camp match that previous week on Raw. Um, this match was just piss poor. Obviously, Al Snow probably wanted revenge on too much for what happened to King of the Ring. Uh, but a nice heel kick from Scorpio and then a follow away slam from Taylor. God, Christopher, I tell you, his laugh is so hard. Oh, I just want to punch him in the mouth. Back, back body dropped in from Snow. Bit of poetry in motion by using a chair from Snow. Taylor, then on, Taylor lands on Chris, Christopher's ball. Super kick from Scorpio. Splash from the top gets two. Snow then with Moonsault from the barrier. Uh, Close line from Snow on Taylor. And then Christopher with a suplex on the floor. Taylor with a spring ball axle on Scorpio. Bulldog from Christopher. Double drop kick from Scorpio. Snow hits both Taylor and Christopher with head, and then Snow goes low on Taylor, and then the Snow Plow gets the win. So, yeah. But I must say, JR says a really funny pun in this. Uh, the, crowd are, uh, the crowd love head. <laughs> like, like I, I know it's meant to be Al Snow's little head mannequin thing, but still, like, man, you don't say that. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so yeah, it was a, other than that, it was a poor match. I'll give it half a star. Next, then, um, Mark Mero defeats the draw, beats dr draws basically the draws or whatever you want to call them in a, another okay ish match. I give it a star. <sighs> oh, excuse me, <sighs> hay fever season, yay. Uh, close line from draws, drop kick then from him as well, and then draws Robbins Mero into the barrack then. Rams Mario, Mario, 
Mario or Mario Mero into the steps. Jesus. Nice kick knee from Mero, and then he backdrops draws over the top rope. Somersault plancher then from Mero. Power slam from draws gets two. Mero then is choking draws with his ring tape. Jackie then from the top rope hits draws with her high heat shoe. And then a shooting star press gets the win. So, like, there's some decent spots in this match, I won't say. Just one second. There's a bit of glare. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so, nice offense in this match. And, um, yeah, so, pretty decent match, I won't say. Still some fucking glare, but uh, whatever. So, I'll give it a star. Um, next match, then, Bradshaw defeats Vader in another piss poor match. This is supposed to be a. a False count anywhere match, I think, or no disqualification. Uh, this, I, this, I think, is Vader's last um, pay per view in the WWF, but he was on Raw the next night after the show, apparently, because I watched it. I'm going to start doing the Raw, just watching Raw and kind of catching up on stuff that I've missed, and then can just talk about it on videos. Uh, close line from Bradshaw, Power Slam from Bradshaw, then also gets two. Big Splash gets two for. Vader, big move then from Bradshaw, nice clothesline then from Bradshaw, that gets two. Vader rams, Bradshaw onto the steps and then drops the steps on Bradshaw, uppercut then from Vader, suplex from Bradshaw, Vader goes low on Bradshaw, that gets two, splash then from the second rope, gets two, and Vader on already gets two, clothesline from Hell, gets two, another one, clothesline from Hell, and then a shit up the neck breaker, get the win for Bradshaw, so I'm probably again overrating this match, half a star, at best you could give this match, and this is, I think is Vader's last pay per view match. But well, he was on Raw the next night. He lost to Al Snow, so no, it's just a shame because like the last kind of like four or five months or even six, well even seven months even of his WWF career kind of went down as a jabber basically. He didn't really do anything in the company, did he? Really, to be fair, uh, had a couple of like I don't think he's a uh, two and a half year stint in WWF was all that memorable, if I'm being honest. So yeah, it's a shame though. Cause yeah, there is potential. He had potential, alright, if he wants. Like for a big man, like he was pretty fucking awesome when it comes to powerbomb, doing stuff from top ropes and all that. So, hmm. okay, yeah. Next match then, Lilo Brown defeats Gangrel in a okay match, I would say. I give it a star and three quarters. Again, this match it just didn't do anything for me. This match. Uh, this is a uh, Gangrel's pay per view debut. So that past that past Monday, uh, Lilo Brown lost the European title to X Pac. Which was good for him. Uh, reverse elbow from Gangrel, belly to belly from Gangrel, and then a Corsico elbow gets two from as well. Heel kick from Dido, Dido misses an axe handle from the second rope. Sit down powerbomb from Dido gets two. Dido counters DD from Gangrel. Suplex then gets two for Dido. Nice clothesline also. Uh, and get Gangrel drops Dido on the ropes. Henry comes out, Henry rams Gangrel into the ring close. The low down gets the win, and then after the match, then Gangrel spits. That red liquid, or in Mark Henry's eyes, or what he probably thinks is blood, and then gives um, Dido his finishing move, which was a lovely DDT. So, so yeah, again, another okay ish match, really. Nothing special. I'll give it a star and three quarters. Don't think you could give it, a, don't think you could give it any more than that. Like, star and a half, you would be really pushing it, but I just. Some of the matches in the Attitude Era were fucking pathetic, though, to be honest. Some of the pay per view. Like, you think from 97 to 2002, there weren't that many great paper, well, except for 2000 and 2001. But if you add the five years of the attitude, well, five, six years, we'd say, the attitude, like, there's probably about 20 or 25 good pay-per-views. The rest are all kind of garbage. Like, if you add it all up, really, so. Something to think about, really. Uh, next match, then, The Rock defeats Ken Shamrock and Mankind in a very good steel cage match to become the number one contender for the WWF Championship. This match was announced on Sunday Night Heat, which is a bit weird considering. No, I mean, it's, it's a bit weird considering a triple threat match in a steel cage match for a number one contendership match to only be announced on Sunday Night Heat, which kind of, mm, can I say this? It's like, obviously it just shows like they give a fuck about this number one contendership match. But um, when we see Kane and Undertaker attacking Mankind and Shamrock, and then they attack Rock with a double show. So this is why this match is a steel cage match. So the, the winner of the match is the number contendership at the next pay-per-view or whenever. Rock then with a great interview with Doc Hendricks. Oh, just the, he's really over, finally over with the crowd. He knows he's about to turn face just for a little while. Kevin Kelly interviews Mankind. Mankind takes the piss out Billy Kitten, shagging that intern, which was fucking brilliant. Rock then gets a great reaction when he comes out. Rock and Shamrock go at it. 
and Mankind is just sitting in the corner. He, I'm loving it. Uh, Mankind sneaks towards the door, but Rock grabs him. Nice kick then from Shamrock. Uh, a dominant stretch from Shamrock, and Rock does the same to Shamrock while Shamrock has Mankind in it, which was an excellent spot. Power slam from Shamrock. Rock grabs Shamrock back into the cage. Rock and Mankind double team Ken. Mankind the Rock then ran Shamrock into the cage. Royal knee down from Mankind. Shamrock with the ankle lock from Mankind, but the Rock breaks it up. Mankind and Shamrock back drop the Rock, and then they then they suplex him. Sweet DDT from the Rock, and then another sweet DDT this time on Shamrock. Rock goes for a double people's elbow, gets it. The crowd go fucking insane. You wouldn't think six months ago this that people's elbow wasn't even over with the crowd. It's so different. I think when they got to I think King of the Ring is when it started to get over. So it's funny. Um, where was I? Rock goes for a double, uh, gets that, but big Rocky chant from the crowd. Mankind drops Rock balls first on the ropes after being on the cage. Rock goes low on Shamrock. Rock bottom then on Mankind. That gets two thanks to Shamrock breaking up. First elbow then from Shamrock and Shamrock, su Shamrock sucks chance from the crowd. This is where you know he's coming to be a heel. <laughs> very to very then from Shamrock and clock then on Rock, but Mankind breaks it up, which the crowd love. Rock drags Mankind back into the cage. Mankind is on the top of the cage. Thinking he's Jimmy F Super Fight Snooker, he drives off the top rope with an elbow but misses. Rock is bleeding from his uh, eye rail. Uh, double arm DT from Mankind. Um, Mankind then has a chair and hits Shamrock with it. Mankind climbs the cage to get out but Rock covers Shamrock for the win. And Mankind thinks he wins basically. And then after the match then Shamrock basically throws a shit fit basically. So yeah, overall a really good match I must say. I'd give it three and a half stars. I don't think it was great I don't think it was great now to be quite honest I think three and a half stars is probably oh you could give it a little more I don't know but I'll give it three and a half I don't want to be kind of overrating because I've kind of overrated a lot of the matches so far this year so three and a half pretty good and the Rock is the one contender for the WWE title which he never actually got because the next pay-per-view Undertaker takes on Kane for the title so he never really got it until Survivor Series basically but still he never got the number one contenders match which was stupid uh, what's going to be next? Valvinus then defeats uh, Dustin Rollins in a fucking piss poor. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you one thing. This match was pathetic this one. I never liked it. Val comes out with Dustin's wife, Terry Rollins, Brian Buster from Val, Parabomb from Dustin, Valvinus then with a close on the outside. Val with a camel clutch and then a close line gets two. Money Shot gets the win and he kisses Terry after, which is good for him. So, just the match was just piss fucking poor. Core star at most, really wasn't good at all, Never, I didn't even want to enjoy this and obviously again these two face each other next month but the only difference is he's not Dustin Rollins, he'll be gold dust again so yeah who gives a flying fuck who gives a flying fuck uh, next match DX then defeat DX which is the new age out of the next pack defeating Jeff Jarrett and Sudden Justice in, in a decent match I must say I thought it was going to give it two stars nothing Two weeks previous on Raw, Jarrett hit the uh, Road Dog with a guitar that was in the throat, so obviously Road Dog couldn't talk. Uh, Lewis came out to the crowd and tax on him, Justice and Jarrett. Jarrett, DX clean house, and Gunn says, you got, You're not done with that, I've got two words for you, suck it. Nice drop kick down from Jarrett, sit down, power ball from Xbox after Jarrett, attend to the leg scissors, and knee from Jarrett to Dog, shake, rattle, and knee drop then from Road Dog, nice clothesline from Canterbury. DT then from Jarrett, that gets two, and then speed hitting kick from Xbox. Pump handle slam, tight move from Canterbury. Uh, vertical suplex from Dennis Knight, that gets two on Xbox. Power slam gets two for Knight as well. Face buster then from Canterbury, gets two thanks to Gun breaking it up. Suplex from Xbox on Jarrett. Jer Gun gets the tag, clean tails. Gorilla plus slam then on Jarrett. Xbox then with the Bronco Buster. Canterbury then with a clothesline on Xbox. Jarrett then hits Xbox. With the guitar, which was lovely. I think he got something in his eye because he was complaining after the match. But famous sir from Gone on Canterbury gets the win. So, decent match, to be fair. It was much better than I was expecting. So, all good. And x Pac gets helped to the back. So, yeah. Decent match. I'll give it uh, two stars. Next time at the main event, uh, Kane and Undertaker defeating Stone Cold because they both pinned them. Uh, so, there's no WWF champion. This was, it was an okay match. It was good ish. I gave it three. So three stars. So uh, on Sunday night, he Austin attacked the man on heat. On heat, obviously, while he was in the cage, Austin was dressed. I think it's a cameraman, uh, beating the crap out of him. Taker and Kane climbed the cage, but by the time they kind of Undertaker got into the ring, Austin was already gone. So 
Uh, Taker then is making his way to the ring. Austin attacks him from behind with a chair. Austin hits Taker in the skull with, with a chair. Austin then with a clothesline. Kane. Austin rams Kane into the ring post. Taker then with a nice uppercut. Austin then rams Taker into the steps. Taker rams Kane. Balls first into the ring post. Austin then with a stunner. And Kane like a suit attacks to Taker, pulling Austin off of Kane. And obviously the other stipulation was Undertaker and Kane could not pin each other. They had to only pin Austin. And if anyone came in to interfere on Austin's behalf, they Austin would be stripped of the title. So basically Austin screwed basically. But um where were we? Uh, close line gets two for Taker. Lou Fels pressed then from Austin and Kane. Swinging Nick Breaker gets two for Austin. Taker hits Kane after Austin ducked. Kane and Taker drop Austin down on the announcer's table. Kane and, and uh, team up then. Austin Lightning Man. T basically, Taker and Kane and do a lot more teamwork, which like McMahon wanted basically. Uh, Patterson, Sergeant Slaughter, and Jared Briscoe are watching up by the stage. Taker then backdrops Austin on the floor. Austin attacks Bris Briscoe and Sergeant hits Austin with, with his foot. Taker rams Austin into the steps. Austin then hits Kane with a chair. Taker hits Austin with a chair. Kane breaks up Taker's pin. Taker breaks up Kane's pin, so there's a bit of friction, so Taker and Kane go out basically. Double close line from Austin, D double choke slam from both men. So and they both both of them pin, so nobody is the champion. So Vince comes down, takes the title belt, runs backstage into his limo, drives up the up the uh, entrance way. Austin attacks Briscoe, Patterson, and Slaughter, and then Austin goes backstage, sees Vince, and Vince goes, "It's not yours anymore. It's mine. It's mine." Basically doing that. Give them the finger and he dreads off. So yeah, so per, yeah, it's a good way storytelling wise, but um, yeah, it wasn't a great match. Three stars, probably a little overrated. I probably at first I was going to give it two and a half, but I said fuck, I'll give it three. So yeah, so overall the pay per view wasn't really particularly great. There was two, two maybe maybe three maybe four decent matches you could watch, but I wouldn't recommend watching the show if you want to watch it as a part of a collection or whatever you want to do. If, if you're if you're bored, you'd watch it basically. So yeah, so overall, I uh, give it a four and a four. Seven, what did I give it actually? I give it a four point seven five because yeah, it's like two three star matches and there's kind of a couple of two stars in there. So yeah, like there wasn't a bad match on the like there wasn't a dull on the card basically. So which is good if you don't have a dull on the card, you're doing something right. But still, a lot of these attitude era pay because we're pretty pathetic. 98, 99 weren't fairly fucking good, I can tell you that. 97 was, same with 97, there was two grey pair, that was it. And maybe two average pair, that was, or three even, that was it. So, um, so yeah, so. The next one I think is Judgment Day, yeah, Judgment Day. Uh, I'm going to watch the three Raws, I think that's before it or four. Uh, I'll do that and just kind of get out and talk about all the major, so there is a lot of major stuff going on between now and the next couple of weeks. Obviously, with the nation, and something to do with the nation, and obviously, t Undertaker and Kane, go and Austin going to be the guest referee. So, I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. So, so this was the Viper 4567. Please subscribe, like, comment, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. So, have a nice day and take it easy.